welcome to yet another book review. All right, we're diving into book two of nine in the Ali Beckstrom series by Devin Monk. This one is Magic in the Blood. Now, as with the first book, we'll be reading the back cover and a little preview blurb of chapter one. But just to give you an idea, this is the second book in the nine book series, again, published by the Rock Fantasy imprint of Penguin. And as I've recommended in the previous uh, episode, by the whole series, uh, all nine books are out now. And if you appreciated book one and are curious to see where all the subplots and loose threads go, Definitely just invest in the full series because once you finish one, you're going to want to start the next. And then you finish that one, you're going to go to the next one, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, it's a little addictive. I'll give you a fair, war fair warning on that. But uh, as good as book one was, book two gets even better because you get a little more of the magical universe and some of the political sides that are influencing a little bit of everything. You get a little more of the behind the curtains look of just what's going on. And as always, if you want to check out a little more about the book, go to Devin Monk's website, devinmonk.com. She has a little bit of info on each book, a little free excerpt at the bottom, and links to where you can purchase a copy of your very own. But for now, to give you all an idea of what this particular book covers in the overall story arc, the back cover. Magic stirred in me, offering whatever I wanted. With little more than a thought and a gesture or two, I could make magic do anything, so long as I was willing to pay the price. Ali Beckstrom knows better than most that when magic's involved, nothing is free. She's had to pay its price of migraines and forgetfulness while working as a hound, tracing illegal spells back to their casters. And even though magic has stolen her recent memory, including her history with the man she supposedly fell in love with, Ali isn't about to give up on hounding or the city she cares about. Then the police's Magical Enforcement Division asks her to consult on what seems to be a straightforward mission, or straightforward missing persons case. But what begins as a way to make rent leads Ali into grave danger when the trail she follows draws her into the dark underworld of criminals, ghosts, and blood magic. There, Ali discovers it will take more than just magic to survive. Bit of a tongue twister there at the end, but uh... Yeah, this one really gets interesting as you delve more into that magical universe and just what is possible and what is not, and kind of the gray area in between as to what should not be possible and yet kind of is. And similar to Book One's writing style, uh, it kind of follows the same trend, but let's give you the first page of Chapter One so you can get an idea. I dunked my head under the warm spray of the shower and rubbed shampoo into my hair, wondering where my next hounding job and paycheck were coming from. I hadn't been using much magic since I got back to town, and the bills were piling up. It was time to get on with my life, time to get on with tracking spells again. I heard a distant pop, like a light bulb blowing, and all the lights in my apartment went out. I opened my eyes just as a stream of soap dripped into them. Ow, ow, ow. Outside, the wind howled past my bedroom window. We'd been having some bad storms lately. Plain old windstorms, not wild magic. Probably a tree or landslide up in the West Hills had knocked out the line or blown a transformer, throwing this part of Portland into a deep, early morning darkness. The wail of an alarm from a nearby business started up, and then an answering siren, and then two joined in on the noise. A couple car alarms got busy. I rinsed as much of the soap out of my eyes as I could, turned off the shower, and stumbled out of the tub. I hit my shin on the toilet bowl. That's all you get. Now, if you want to read a little more of chapter one, uh, go to the website, click on the Magic in the Blood page, and the excerpt has several more pages worth of what I've just kind of given you a preview of. If you want to get a better idea before purchasing the book, I don't blame you. 
I still highly recommend it, but if your budget is tight and you really want to get a good idea of what you're getting yourselves into, then read the excerpt first, and then click on any of the following links to Powell's, IndieBound, Book Depository, BNN, Amazon, whatever your preference happens to be, and then go get a copy of your very own. Or, if all else fails, there's always your local library. Uh, most of them will probably have this. I know mine does, and I'm pretty certain that a couple of the other ones in my area have at least the first three or four books. Uh, I know the last two or so, it's kind of hit or miss as to which libraries may have it, which ones don't. But again, most libraries also have an interlibrary lending program, so even if yours doesn't specifically, a nearby one will, and they can port it over for you easily enough, usually without too much fuss, depending on where you happen to be based. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a good book. It goes into greater detail as to the whole blood magic and the dangers of it. And it starts really previewing a lot of what goes into like books three, four, five, and beyond as to who the other hounds in Portland are, what they how what part they play in the overall plot, just what can Xavier Jones do and why is he so powerful? Why did someone murder her father? And what does that mean for her and the people that her father worked for? It's complicated. Just to give you a bit of spoilers, it is complicated and intriguing. And it just gets even more complicated as you go along. And there's a couple weird twists that you kind of expect. And then there are spoilers that reveal like, oh, these things are connected, but it still doesn't make sense. So you have to keep on reading more, which is why I still recommend just get all nine books. That way you don't have to wait in between books. Once you finish one, you can just pick up the next one right then and there and continue the story. Alright, tune in next time when we review book number three.